In this video, we're going to take a look at both the content and data tools in the Coral Bleaching module. Let's start by navigating to the website. We can open the module in full screen by clicking the rectangular button on the bottom of the page. Now that the module's open, notice the tab structure along the top. By default, it will always open on the Introduction tab. Let's explore the first lesson by clicking on Level 1. Each level has content in the left sidebar and interactive maps, graphs, and multimedia within the larger right window. In Level 1, learners interact with maps to figure out how factors like depth and ocean temperature affect the distribution of coral reefs. Let me show you a few features. As I scroll down, you'll see a map that shows the global distribution of reefs. The major coral systems are shown in green. Ocean depth is shown as variations of gray. Notice the color bar for depth that's referenced on the bottom left. You can click and drag on the map to move it, and you can zoom in or out. After exploring the map, users can attempt to answer the question on the left. The question says, where do coral reefs seem to be located? And I'm going to click the answer that says, waters near the shore and on either side of the equator. And then check my answer. And great, I can see I answered correctly. As the lesson progresses, learners interact with additional maps, like this one, to explore how ocean temperature affects coral reef distribution. All maps in this module are interactive. And on this particular one, you can turn layers on and off, pull up the color bar, or collapse the menu altogether. As students progress through the lesson, they can keep track of their findings by completing the worksheet found on the website. OK, let's take a look at the next lesson by clicking on the Level 2 tab. In this lesson, students evaluate temperature data to explore the effect of heat stress on the health of corals. The lesson starts by prompting users to explore a graph of sea surface temperature, in this case from average weekly summer temperatures from 2017 on the Great Barrier Reef. Time in weeks is on the x-axis, sea surface temperature on the y-axis. Anytime temperatures are 1 degree Celsius above the warmest average summer ocean temperatures, corals are expected to become stressed and possibly bleach. This is called the bleaching limit shown as the blue dashed line. You can see that ocean temperatures were above the bleaching limit every week in this time period. If you graph just the values above the bleaching limit, you get a graph that looks like this. By adding up these values, we can measure how much heat stress has built up over time. This is what NOAA and others do to understand and predict bleaching events. This measurement is called degree heating weeks, and it's the sum of the weekly heat stress over a 12-week period. In other words, how hot did the ocean get and how long did it stay hot over a period of 12 weeks? So let's try it. If we add up each of the 12 weekly values here on this graph, we get a sum of 6.6. .6. So that is the degree heating weeks value for this time period. If you were to do the same calculation during the same 12-week period for locations across the ocean, you could create a global map showing accumulated heat stress. Here at the Great Barrier Reef, notice that the colors range from light to dark orange. This corresponds to values of about 6 to 10 on this color scale. And you can see what these values likely mean here. Your students will need to be able to interpret maps like this one if continuing on to levels 4 and 5. Let's move on to the next lesson by clicking on level 3. In this level, students will learn why heat stress can cause corals to bleach, and they'll practice some in-the-field data collection techniques used to monitor corals. To begin, students can explore images from a few locations in the Pacific, to compare reefs before and after a bleaching event has occurred. Then, students can practice making quantitative measurements using the same monitoring techniques that scientists may use to monitor and assess coral health. Four high-resolution images from coral reefs can be projected or printed to complete this activity. Now, I'm going to open the image for reef number one. 
This image has been divided into 100 squares of equal size to simulate using a monitoring tool called a quadrat. Ten of these squares represent a subsample and are outlined in yellow. You can see that the worksheet instructs learners to take data on whether the coral inside of each yellow square is alive or dead, and if alive, how much of the coral is bleached. Here's an example. I'm going to zoom in to square number 16. Dead coral typically appears fuzzy because of algae that grows over it when it's dead, like right over here. The coral in square 16 appears alive, but some is white, indicating that bleaching has occurred. So I'll type a zero on the sheet to indicate it's alive. And next, I'm going to estimate how much is bleached inside of the square using a scale from 1 to 10. A zero means no coral is bleached. 10 means all coral is bleached. I'm going to call this a 3 because I'm estimating that about 30% of the coral inside of the square is white. Let's navigate back to level 3 and continue on to level 4. In this level, students build on the skills they've learned in earlier lessons to answer this question. To what extent is heat stress affecting the health of Florida's coral reefs? In order to answer the question, students can access two data sources. To get data on heat stress, students can use the map to access a graph showing degree heating weeks data from the past four years. Or click on the More Info link and you can download data from 1985 through today. This is what the data file looks like. Some bleaching data can also be accessed using this link. Here, you can find monitoring reports from Moat Marine Lab. They're published every two weeks and summarize the extent of bleaching on coral reefs in the area. As students explore the available data, they can use the worksheet to keep track of findings and construct an explanation using the claim evidence reasoning format. I'm going to briefly navigate to level five, where students can develop their own investigations about the effect of heat stress on coral bleaching. If your students are stumped, or need ideas, there are a few sample questions here. Let's look at the two tools for gathering data. The first tool is a time series map, showing degree heating weeks values from January 2000 to 2016. The second tool gives users access to data and graphs at the locations shown here on this map. Both historic and current data are available for these six sites. One last feature that I'd like to show you is the Get Data tab. Here, users can access data tools without having to navigate through the lessons. This could be useful if you're interested in developing your own lessons. That's it for the tour. Keep in mind that levels one through five do not have to be used in sequence over the course of one or more weeks. Most levels can be used as standalone lessons, something I do frequently with my own students when I have limited class time. If you need more information, go to the website for additional resources, including a step-by-step -step teacher's guide. Thanks for watching.